Is this thing on? <laughs> All right, first the shirt. This is a golf shirt. It's a little weird. I believe I got it at Goodwill for like three, four bucks or so. I'm sure it costs $75 to $100 uh, new from a sports store. Uh, I'm not a rich guy. I don't even play golf. And so it's, you know, since I'm not a millionaire or a billionaire, it's unnecessary for me to waste money. And so I buy, I'm in Florida. Lots of golf here, right? So of course, as, you know, retirees play golf, get older, and then pass away, where do all their golf shirts go? So all the Goodwills, right? So there's tons and tons of golf shirts in uh, Florida Goodwills. So no no need to pay a hundred bucks. Just uh, find a shirt at Goodwill. Wash it well, of course, you know, perfectly good shirts. Um, so there it is, it, there, there's the golf shirt. Anyway, uh, my topic today, I had to figure out what my topic is gonna to be today. I have lots of topics I wanna talk about. Uh, just one at a time though, because I don't want to get, you know, at all over the place. Plus I want to keep them somewhat tame as far as the length. You know, this is not a dialogue. This is not a group. And so I'm not going to do that three hour stuff. Uh, but I also don't want to make it, you know, where it's just a, you know, 30 second TikTok video either. It's not about entertainment for me. Uh, in fact, that's part of a big problem for me. Um, having been born and raised and lived in America all my life. It's the whole idea of seeking pleasure all the time. Um, and so that's that's a morality issue. Look up the word depraved. D-R-D-E-P-R-A-V-E-D. -E -E Depravity. And, and look it up uh, in a thesaurus, which is similar to a dictionary, but a thesaurus under synonyms gives you words that are similar to what depravity is and it gives you a better idea as to the definition of the word and so i think that is a problem in america we, we seek pleasure in everything from uh, sexual pleasure to drugs to alcohol to entertainment it's all self-pleasuring that's the common theme in america with all the entertainment industry the internet and almost everything we do with these smartphones etc and so the corporate world has kind of, you know, profited from that, using entertainment as a way to make profits, right? So, um, you know what I forgot? I forgot my glasses. I'm 59, almost 60, and so uh, I forget things, and I need reading glasses. Hold on. So you know how reading glasses are pretty boring, right? Well, um, the El Cheapo store called uh, the Dollar Tree, which is no longer the Dollar Tree, they up their prices. Not a lot, but you don't find a lot of things for act an actual dollar at the Dollar Tree anymore because inflation, right? Uh, so I have lots of regular boring glasses, but I uh, happen to have this crazy looking pair next to me. So here it comes. Yeah, I know. I'll take them off in a second. I know it's scary looking and it's hard to look at. All right, uh, but it helps me to see. So I'll just read through this and then I'll go go through each item here. I, I, would, I want to stay on topic. I want to be professional as I can be. So um, why I think corporate capitalism should be banned federally. <laughs> corporate capitalism. What is corporate capitalism? It's... Uh, giant billion dollar companies that are nationwide or global wide where you have it's like amazon mcdonald's microsoft these huge humongous global companies that control everything and are actually monopolies but they have corporate lawyers that argue that they're not a monopoly and then they use examples as to how they're not and they are very good at their job and they get paid to convince a judge and a jury that they're not a mon monopoly and that, so that's that's the game we have here with these giant corporations and that's why i think they should be banned entirely in fact these same corporations 
lobby, which means they go to DC, they hire lobbyists, which are people that are actually specifically trained to locate, talk to, schmooze, and influence, and even bribe uh, legislators at the state level and at the federal level to make laws that benefit corporations. Yes, they do this, and they've been doing it since like the 1930s, maybe before then. <laughs> I don't know how long. I've only been alive since the 1960s, uh, but it's been going on my whole life, uh, corporate capitalism. And it's just, it keeps on getting worse, and they have more and more control over the federal government so that uh, we are not represented by the government anymore. Corporations are. That's why these large corporations should be banned entirely, in my opinion, if it could ever happen, which it won't, but if it could, I think the world would be a better place. All right. And, and also part of this, why I think corporate capitalism should be banned and why I think only local companies should be allowed, which means like mom and pop stores, right? Like if you start a business, you shouldn't have to compete with McDonald's. You shouldn't have to compete with these giant chain stores that have billions of dollars and can undersell you. That's not fair. Uh, all right, so let's start with mechanization. So when you have a giant corporation, you, you, you mechanize things, which means assembly lines. You hire the cheapest employee possible. You give them a single function in an assembly line. You treat them like a robot and you, you give them the the worst wage possible and you tell them if you don't like it you can leave we'll find someone else right so these are actual wage slaves they're desperate for money they are poor they need the job desperately and you the corporation you being the corporation leverage and exploit their poverty to turn them into economic slaves to get them to do your dirty work that's that is unfortunately the nature of large corporations. They look for experts to do the hard stuff like engineering, you know, tech type stuff. And they pay them, you know, what they have to, to get the job done. But when it comes to assembly line type work, you know, not a lot of experience needed, they pay the bottom dollar. <laughs> and so all these, you know, we have all these different jobs based on expertise and education and that sort of thing. But even education doesn't really matter. It, what matters is your expertise. And so if you're really good at something, you'll be paid well. If you are just being uh, trained to, you know, look for flaws in bolts and nuts, you'll be paid the bottom dollar. In fact, if you're not from America and you're not a U.S. citizen, you'll be paid like a dollar a day in cash, <laughs> right? Like under the table, you don't really exist. Do what you're told or get out. That sort of thing. So... This whole mechanization is where things are, are treated like an assembly line or like a clock where everything is standardized and there's no personalization. It's so big and it's so cyclical, it turns into a machine, it's mechanized. And so you don't really feel like a human being. When you go into a store, <clears throat> a corporate store, you feel like you don't really matter. Nobody talks to you. It's all just cold and you feel like you're in a machine. So that's the problem with uh, large corporations. Um, they have political power, like I mentioned. They influence using their money and their lobbying. Uh, they have secret meetings. Yes, they do. They have secret meetings and agreements with uh, other corporations. Um, they have organizations that they meet with. They meet with... Uh, Congress people, they meet with the president, okay? <laughs> they meet with governors, they make deals. They make private secret deals with each other. They do, yes. Um, why don't you know about it? Well, that's the word secret, remember that? They're not gonna let you know. The whole intent is to keep it secret. So if, they, if you ask them, they're gonna say, no, I don't know what you're talking about. You have to have actual physical evidence untampered and then even with that evidence, you have to convince other people that this is really happening. So it's, a, it's an uphill hell battle. Um, all right, identical stores, you know, you go anywhere around the world. Uh, you know, you can go to a McDonald's or 
whatever chain type stores there are around the world, they'll be very similar. Not identical, but very similar. And so the uniqueness of going into a local store where there's only one of that particular company, right? The mom and pop store, they have, it's a cultural thing for that area. They will, the owners will actually greet you at the door. They have maybe two employees. They're very friendly. And uh, that's something that we need to bring back. Uh, the human touch, right? Where we are actually being kind to each other. We talk about our lives with each other. We get to know each other. And uh, so um, that would really add to our local cultures. So if you were li to live in this town, it has its own culture. Then this other town, they have their own culture. And each town would have their own stores. So each one would be unique to itself, right? So you don't have, you, you can't go from, from town to town to town if you're traveling and see the same business over and over and over, like a McDonald's, Burger King, KFC, you know, and then all the, the, the uh, gas stations, right? All the same corporate gas stations. Everything's corporate. Everything is just like the same thing in all the different locations. All right, what else do we need to talk about? Um, making, using the poor as tools, right? So instead of you being a valued person that, you know, has an investment in the company where you're actually part, part of it, you're part of the team, and you're actually making some of the profits, you're all together, working together to, to make the company profitable. Uh, instead, you're used as a tool. You're ordered to do this job, and if you don't do it, you're fired, right? And so we really need to go back to uh, the small company where every employee is treated as a valued person, a human being. And that is, that is the, the huge value in these mom and pop stores, we call them. Just local, single, maybe two at the most, but typically just one store. It could be a restaurant, hardware store, general store, uh, whatever the specialty is, there's only one store and it's unique and it's very cool because it's unique, right? There's nothing else like it, just like us. I'm unique, you're unique, each person is unique. So we would really love to have stores that have unique things, right? All right, so let's, let's go to the next. Um, knowing the owner, a competition. Uh, if a corporation is a monopoly, then there's no one to compete with, right? So they can raise their prices as much as they want to and you can't do anything about it because that's the only store. Suppose, suppose you have a mom and pop store, but they're the only restaurant in that whole town and they have really high prices. Well, you can open up your own store and you can have better prices, right? So that, now you have better prices. They're local, unique stores, but there's several of them as demand pushes, you know, people can't all go to the same store because there's too many of them and the prices are too high. So open up a different store, a different company, different owner, uh, different types of food, uh, different location, uh, better prices. So now they're competing against each other and the public is winning out because they don't have to pay as much. Now, the, the store owner doesn't make as much profit by doing that because they have to lower their price to get customers, but it's the customers that win in this situation. They don't have to pay as much. Now they have money to do other things. All right, what else? Um, every town has their own unique culture, style, taste, and businesses. That would be really nice, wouldn't it? Just to be able to go into a town where it's a completely unique culture. And when you look at the stories, you've never seen them before. Wouldn't that be cool? Every town having its own set of stores, unique to itself. Uh, and I, I, I would propose this. If it were possible to, to make large corporations illegal, just to ban them all. Say, like, sorry, you have to sell everything and you can keep all your money, but you have to sell all that stuff and you have to close your business within 30 days. 
That's the way it is. It's federal law, and we will enforce this law. Um, and so for the small businesses, uh, my proposal <laughs> as a federal law to actually help these businesses would be uh, no tax, no taxation for businesses making less than $500,000 in profits annually. So that would, that would be just about every small business, right? And only when you become rich, you're making over $500,000 in profits. That's pretty good, right? Only then would you start having to pay taxes. Taxes to who? To the local government, the town you live in, uh, probably to the state. Uh, state would be for uh, uh, state roads, uh, highways, possibly. I'm not sure exactly how it divides from state and local and federal, but each one has a part. Um, although on the federal side, I'm not sure the federal government really does anything at all. In fact, uh, I know they do education, you know, public education, but I think the states would do a better job at public education than the federal government because of the political agenda, the way um, the poor are exploited because they can't afford private schools. And then they influence uh, and corrupt uh, kids, our kids while we're at work and we trust schools to teach our kids valuable things. Instead, they're teaching them uh, immoral values. Most importantly being that they are teaching these kids not to trust their parents and instead to trust the government. That's very insidious. Uh, it's, it's not blatant. It's intentionally deceptive and quiet, but that's exactly what happens. Why do you think we uh, say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? We're not, do we ever pledge allegiance to our parents? Do we pledge allegiance to our families? Why not? We should. We should not be pledging allegiance to people we've never heard of and have never seen in some faraway place. We should be pledging allegiance to the people that take care of us, provide for us, and keep us secure. That would be our parents, right? And then we should pledge allegiance to each other, our family members, to be kind, to be respectful, um, to treat each other with dignity, right? That's what we should be doing. We should be focusing on pledging allegiance to families, our families. And also, you know, we should be loyal to our neighbors. Be friendly and kind, helpful to our neighbors. Love our neighbors as ourselves. Ever heard of that? So treat them as if they're your family, the people that live around you. And, uh, all right. So the last thing is an example, and that example being Goodwill. So Goodwill is a store where you can buy things that people have donated. So if you uh, donate clothes, dishes, things you don't want anymore, and you put them all in a big box, and you take them up to the Goodwill store, and you drop the box off, and now you have decided not to sell that stuff or keep that stuff. You've decided not to give it away to friends or family. Instead, you're giving that stuff away to a for-profit store. And that for-profit store is still listed as a non-profit. Let me take these crazy glasses off. Don't need them anymore. So they're listed as a non-profit, just like the NFL was for decades until they finally got called out. But Goodwill is still listed as a non-profit, which means that they don't have to pay taxes, right? Isn't that a smooth little deal for them? But in fact, they are a profit company. They make profits, okay? They have a president, a CEO, a vice president. They have executives, and they all make probably over $100,000 a year. Uh, for doing what? For doing what? For making profits, for, for designing their company and hiring staff and uh, selling these products for top dollar. They are not like your donation that you put out there in that box, they don't just put all that stuff on racks in the store, at that store. No, 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 they, 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 they itemize things. They look things up on the internet. They see what the actual value is. 
If it's not worth much, they'll put it on the rack. Some things they throw in the trash. Like if you gave away a dirty pair of holy socks, those are going in the trash. Okay. But if you give away a Rolex watch that's still in good condition, they will look that up on the internet, see what the actual value is, and they will not put that on, on the rack. No, they're not selling it to the local people. They will be putting that online on their Goodwill online store, and they will put a price on there comparable to what it's actually worth. So instead of sticking a watch on a rack, selling it for 50 cents, and you find the great deal, right? No, you're going to see it online, and it's for sale for $50,000. And so there's the huge profits that Goodwill is making from people that donate freely. So you give all the stuff to them for free. So that every, all of the stuff that Goodwill gets is all handed to them for free. So all of their, they don't have to produce a product. They don't have to buy raw materials. They don't have to buy anything. Stores are already there. They just buy the store. You know, when the corporation, when it changed hands, we had an original owner of Goodwill where they just put everything on the racks. It was fine. It was all free to them anyway, so let the customers have them, you know, for a good price. And, you know, the, the owner was making a good profit already, you know, so he doesn't need to try to get top dollar. He just wants to be, he wants to, to the original goal of Goodwill was to have Goodwill, to, to show Goodwill to the public specifically to people that couldn't afford to buy brand new things. And as society became poorer and poorer over the years and decades, um, more and more people went to Goodwill. And then the, the original owner got old and died, and the store got sold to an investor. And so now this investment company uh, leverages all the incoming things, they separate them out, they triage everything according to value, they have employees look up the high-valued items and put them online for sale, and then all the garbage that isn't worth very much, they put on the racks, like the old broken lamps, <laughs> the, the dishes, you know, all the stuff that's worth less than, say, $20 or so. But if something's worth more than $100, they will not be putting it on the racks. Number one, they don't want it to be stolen, Number two, they want to make sure they get top dollar. So they will look it up, they will find out what it's actually worth, and they will sell it online. And so uh, we can do the same thing. We can sell our stuff online as well, especially if it has value, and that's what we should be doing. We should not be giving our stuff away to Goodwill. And the reason why I mentioned Goodwill is, you know, first to mention their practices and the fact that they're still called a nonprofit, even though it's not a nonprofit, there's a lot of businesses that are playing that game. They say they're not a, uh, they say they're, they're a nonprofit for tax purposes, but then if you look at the actual, uh, and they have to report this publicly if they're a nonprofit. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the annual salaries of the executives for that company, you'll see that they're making a whole lot of money. Um, and as you know, Goodwill is a national chain. It might be global. I don't know. But Goodwill is one of those corporations, right, where they started out as a local little, you know, place, a, a thrift store. You know what a thrift store is, right? You go in there. Typically, most thrift stores don't even bother with a name. They just put the name thrift store in front. And it's some crappy looking dilapidated building. You go inside, you see a bunch of used stuff with price tags on it, and that's it. They have an old cash register. Uh, they might not even take credit cards. Uh, and, and you'll see those kind of places. But those are not national chains, and those are not corporations. Those are just individually owned thrift stores where they, they get donations, just like Goodwill, and they put everything on the racks, but they don't. They don't try to, to squeeze out the highest profit possible. Um, they're more like what Goodwill was originally, where they were just a thrift, thrift store, but they became so popular, they, they got themselves a name and uh, a, a brand, right? Goodwill with the blue, right? And then they started make, putting out more stores with the Goodwill name as they bought more buildings 
and made that a goodwill and then another city and another town another city another town they spread all across the u.s and so it became a corporation it's a nonprofit corporation goodwill uh but then it became a you know an actual for profit even though on the books it's still listed as a nonprofit. And that's just one example of many where uh, over time, and as people figure it out, you know, the owners figure it out, they learn to uh, exploit the poor as employees. They exploit the poor customers by giving, you know, giving them only the junk and not allowing them to touch the good stuff. They don't have the money for it, right? Too bad for you. <laughs> Um, and there's other businesses that do that too. Um, we have Apple that seems to think that they are better than everyone, even though their products are inferior to, uh, other products. They, they act as if they're better and people believe it. And so they charge ridiculous prices and you're not allowed to know what the cost margins are, like the cost to manufacture the the cost of uh, raw materials, uh, the, uh, the wages of the employees that assemble these items that are in Taiwan, in China, in the Philippines, in Thailand, you don't get to know what their wages are. And if you do, you know that you know, there may be a dollar in their money, you know, maybe a dollar a day, maybe less, but they're paid bottom possible. They do not have assembly lines in America because we would actually need to be paid a living wage and so uh, corporations because of NAFTA uh, and other things corporations are allowed to leave America and set up factories in other countries uh, that pay the least wages to their employees and have the least environmental protections so they can do whatever they want, they can pay as least possible, and they can make as most, as most profit possible. And that's because uh, federal U.S. law allows them to do that. And they can list themselves as a nonprofit. So uh, there's a lot of issues out there that we are dealing with. And this, my, I think my next topic is going to be about um, morality, um, where we have ethics and morality which is honesty it's, it's self-honesty it's integrity it's doing the right thing being kind considerate respectful uh helpful to each other uh it's not being greedy it's uh being kind to your neighbors it's um you know as a, as a business owner you want to make a profit you want to be able to pay your bills you want to be able to do well even but you don't want to become a bad person where you're exploiting employees, you're screwing them over, um, and you're screwing over your customers with cheap plastic garbage products and making it hard for them to return them. <laughs> uh, that you don't want to be that kind of person. So that's, those are moral issues. Um, and so I'll, I'll talk about that next time. I hope you enjoyed this if you haven't already and notice I didn't say anything about hitting a like button or subscribe or whatever and that, that's because if, if you're watching YouTube you already know about all that stuff right and so I don't I, I feel like I don't know I have mixed feelings about that I don't want to push people and tell people what to do and I think that uh, your decision making should come from you I shouldn't be the one dictating what you do so if I say, push the like button, you know, I'm not your boss. You can do what you want to do. But, um, so that's my, my thought on that. And, uh, my, my goal is, is not likes. I know that is the goal for most people. That's also a moral issue. Uh, anything that is purely selfish, me for me, uh, that is an immoral value. Uh, when we become selfless and kind and giving to other people, and we share and want to help others. Now, this, this is assuming that your life is financially secure, okay? If you're struggling, if you are living uh, day to day and you are food and shelter insecure, if you're homeless, if you're desperately just trying to survive, obviously 
being kind and giving is not an option, right? You're just trying to stay alive. But if you have plenty of money, if you have an indoor pool in your backyard, if you're living just fine with no issues, then from a moral standpoint, you should be willing and you should be actually giving to others, giving of your time, your talent, your kindness, your socialization. You should be helping others to be polite and kind. Uh, you should be working as a community together uh, on any kind of issues, uh, helping each other when each other is down. If someone's depressed, be there for them, right? Listen to them and you know help them to feel better. It's gonna be okay, right? I'm here for you, right? Uh, that's what we should be doing. And those, those are moral values where we uh, respect each other, we're honest with ourselves and with others, we're not hateful, we're not resentful, we don't hold a, a record of wrong against each other, um, we let go of things, right? These are all in our minds, right? So we need to let go of all past hurts and memories. We need to let all of those go. That's the past. So let them go into the past and look at today and tomorrow as a new day. So now we are fresh and we are looking forward. And now we're able to not only help ourselves, but also to help others around us. And that is the basis and the foundation of ethics and morality. And I'll talk more about that next time. All right. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.